Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I am Mark Wallace and we are dedicating a few episodes of Exploring Photography to basic studio lighting techniques. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use a light meter. Now, last episode we talked about something called sync speed. That's the fastest shutter speed we can use with our flash. And that helps us to understand how a light meter works, how you set it all up. And a light meter, basically you set up your ISO and your shutter speed, and it tells you what aperture to use when you're taking a photo. Why is that? Why is it always telling you the aperture setting and nothing else? Well, to understand that, we need to understand the different kinds of metering the, through the lens metering our cameras use and the metering that we use in a studio with a light meter. So to understand all that, here's a cool animation that I made just for that. There are two basic methods of metering light, incident metering and reflective metering. Your camera's built-in light meter uses reflective metering. Here's how it works. Light travels from its source and reflects off the subject and into your camera's lens. When the light enters your camera, it travels down the lens and then hits a mirror. The light is then reflected at a 90 degree angle up into the pentaprism and finally out the eyepiece. The mirror and pentaprism allow us to see exactly what's coming through the lens. Your camera's light meter is inside the pentaprism. This built-in light meter is what your camera uses to show you meter readings in the viewfinder. Some of the light is allowed to travel through the main mirror and hit a secondary mirror. This smaller mirror reflects the light onto the autofocus sensor. This sensor is what your camera uses to focus the lens. When you press your shutter release button, both of these mirrors move out of the way, the shutter opens, and the exposure is made. When you're using flash heads that are synced to your camera, they don't fire until the shutter is completely open, which means that your built-in light meter has no way of seeing and metering this light. For studio work, you'll need an incident light meter. Instead of metering light that reflects off the subject, incident meters measure the light that is actually falling on the subject itself. You simply place the meter next to your subject and take a reading. In a normal studio setup, you'll set your camera and light meter to the same shutter speed and ISO setting. When you take a meter reading, the light meter will tell you the correct aperture value and you'll set your camera accordingly. Once you're all set up, you'll only have to worry about the aperture value. Well, now we know about some of the theory that is involved in using a light meter. Now let's put that into practice and get some handles on how this actually works. Now, the question that you might be asking yourself is, Mark, which aperture value is the correct aperture value? Well, that depends on what you want to do. So to walk through that and how to adjust all this stuff, I'm going to ask Kelly to join us. And since Kelly is the tallest model in the world, I'm going to have you actually sit right there and we're going to go through some of these things. Now when we use a light meter, if you go back a few episodes of exploring photography, you'll understand that you need to point this lumosphere at the camera when you're starting out. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. As far as the settings go, I have told my light meter that I'm shooting at ISO 200. I have set it to my camera sync speed, which is 180th of a second. I've also set my camera to ISO 200 and 180th of a second. All that remains is the aperture value. And so what I'm doing here is I have a little remote. When I push the test button, that makes my flash fire. And so I can push the button on the side of my meter and then push this. And then my uh, meter tells me that this light is metering at f2.0. Now, that is not the aperture value that I want. Why is that? Well, 2.0 has really shallow depth of field. And in fact, her entire face is not going to be in focus. And so for this portrait, what I want is an aperture value of about f10, maybe f11, because that will give me everything in focus, from her nose all the way to the back of her head. And that is what I want. So what I need to do is I need to go from f2, which isn't very much light. That means that our aperture has to be really wide to bring in that light. And I need to increase the power of this flash until it gets to f11. Now on every single flash, speed light, studio strobe, it doesn't matter, there is some way, read your user manual, but there is some device, some dial that will allow you to increase or decrease the power. On this Profoto B2, it's just this big dial here. So I'm gonna increase that, and so I'm gonna put that up a little bit more, and then I'm gonna hit this little test button and come back over here. We're gonna see where we are now. 
Now we're at 5.6, so not enough. I have to keep going. So I'm going to keep going until I have this set to more power, and then we'll meter this one more time. And now I'm metered at F11. Now once you use a flash for a little while, you'll get to the point where you know pretty much exactly where you need it to be every time to hit F11 or 4.5 or 22, and it's really fast, and so you don't have to worry about that. With a little practice, you'll be there. So now we're set at F11. So what I did, let's review. ISO set in the meter, the same as in the camera. Shutter speed that's set in the meter, the same as in the camera. And then I metered and adjusted this until I got it to an aperture value that I wanted, which was F11. Now the only thing that's left for me to do is set my aperture to F11 on my camera and take some pictures. So let me do that and I'll show you the results. There you have it. Using a light meter in the studio is pretty simple. Remember, you set your camera and meter to the same ISO and shutter speed, which is your camera's sync speed, and then you meter and adjust your flash until you get to the aperture value that you want. Now, of course, there's more to metering than just that, but the good news is over at the Adorama Learning Center, we have hundreds of videos about shaping light, using light ratios, light modifiers, bouncing light, anything you can think of, it's over there, and it's absolutely free. So check that out, and also, don't for forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's free, and that way you get all the good stuff for me and everybody else that contributes every single day. So do that right now. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you again next week.